Hello. This meeting Hello. is being... Hello. 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 Hello, Hello. you lovely people. Oh my gosh. Uh, Margo, how does it feel to be on the other end of this exhaustive cold open that we do? Ah, it exhaustive? feels awesome, man. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about exhaustive. I think maybe well, uh, we've we've turned it into a fine trope, if you will. It, it's great. No, I'm 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 not <laughs> suggesting we change it. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. And thank you for calling me. Inviting yeah, me for the, to this uh, meeting. Oh, of course. Thank you for calling IT. Have you tried turning it off, turning it back on again? <laughs> um, this uh, this is always strikes last. The Warhammer Age of Sigmar podcast with uh, myself, Miles, and my co-host Matt. Jack may be joining us later. We'll see how the the winds of change uh, change for him. And uh, but we are joined uh, very excitingly. Um, Today by Marco, former captain of Team Serbia, current player on Team Serbia, and uh, an awesome guy to chat with. So we thought we'd uh, have a nice little chat here on the podcast. Welcome, Marco. Thank you very much, uh, Miles. Thank you very much, Matt. I'm very happy to be here. I had a pleasure of uh, meeting Miles in person at a AOS Worlds, and I have to say it is rare sight to see a man so happy to play this lovely hobby of ours <laughs> truly I, is. I, I i think um we had a good game last year right we didn't get to play this year but last year and um I, it was one of those matches where like i think you had beast of chaos and it's that that mission where you're just on the on the, you just have to tag the the table quarters yes so it was like i was never gonna win this <laughs> you know <laughs> It was unfavorable, Matt. It was unfavorable yeah. matchup because you had a bunch of slow units, and yeah. I had a Kronspine and Beast of Chaos with only exactly. Kronspine on the table. Yeah, that's a that's a hard start. That's a hard start, Miles. But but I think at some point, you know, he looks at me. He's like, "Man, you're getting your ass kicked. How are you this chill?" <laughs> no, you know what's even worse because uh, he had abysmal rolls. His rolls were like. You should not be playing this game. It was that level of bad rolls, and he was like, oh. "Just keep going, you know, just smiling." And I, I'm, I'm being like, a, I'm a salt master, especially when it comes to rolls. And my friends keep joking that I'm either going to die of heart attack at 45 or live uh, up to 120 out of pure spite. There we go. Uh, because, <laughs> because I always get angry at the rolls, my rolls. And Miles was just like a Zen ma master. You know, just standing there, chilling, you know, just watching those snake eyes over and over again. And I was like, this guy, I, I have to learn from this man. <laughs> I wanted to learn from this man. Oh, the, uh, my, my luck got reversed in our um, my match against uh, the Czech Republic, and I rolled uh, just unreasonably hot. Um, it was, it was one of those times, you know, like, you're like, you're doing your five up worth saves on Nurgle and it's like, cool. I just saved 30 out of 35 five up saves. Wow. So yeah. <laughs> what else do you got? <laughs> um, so it was really, it was just an exercise in getting all the ones and twos out. You know, that's the... <laughs> That's, that's, that's that generally the process that I go through nowadays. It's just like, yeah, I'm just, you know, I'm, this game, that, that's fine. We're just getting all these out. Sometimes it takes like a full four games before the fifth one in a grand tournament, you know. <laughs> but, you know, that's how it goes. <laughs> oh, my gosh. No, it's excellent. I'm sad. I'm sad we didn't get to play you, but you guys did way better than we did this year. So maybe next year we'll uh, we'll aim to we'll – Make it a grudge match. Hey, listen, I don't think that we should have a grudge match because each and every member of our team, like I, I'm I'm very boring type of person because I don't like the trash talk between AOS uh, teams because I, I love this game and I love playing it on the international level. And like mm -hmm. every single opponent I had, I wanted to hug. So it's like I'm a horrible for trash talking. But as for the grudge <laughs> match, I would really love to have it next year 
Um, this year, I w- I kind of wanted to avoid playing against you guys because <laughs> because you guys are usually so lucky. I don't know oh. what happened this year. I don't know what happened this year, but you know what? Our our game was we played better this year. Uh, but I also missed playing against lovely people like like you guys. And it's not saying that we have played against horrible people. No, but it's no, something no. like you know. No, we played against good people, just not our favorite people, you know? Exactly. I That's think you should do, like, a positive comment match. Not a grudge match, but, like, yeah. you know... <laughs> Who can say in, the nicest thing? Yeah, where you just, you just uh, put out, you know, instead of a grudge video, you put out a um, super positive uh, video where you go through all the strengths and, you know, the, the, uh, the character... Uh, the things that you love about the person's character oh and and then call it a grudge match at the end right. <laughs> you know well Matt. there's, there's you know, an Matt. old <laughs> <laughs> there's an old uh, sketch comedy uh program with it's with like very early steve carell and i think dana carvey's in it and they're the, the bit that they're doing is germans who say nice things and so and it's just like them with this sort of aggressive um german accent that's like sort of very in your face being like it was a pleasure to babysit kevin <laughs> <laughs> yep spot on right there just as angry sounding as possible but saying the yeah. nicest things ever <laughs> spot on oh my god <laughs> well well matt as an um uh, as a regional expert on youtube what do you think? Will that be um, attractive content? I mean, I believe I believe it would be only because it would make all the other grudge uh, videos that go out a little bit, um, uh, you know, a, a little bit pedantic compared to positive building. You know, um, actually, I have no idea to be honest how that how that would work for anybody else but i think it would be hilarious and right up my line of comedy so no I, i'm with you I, definitely I'm worth this, it uh, self-deprecation is uh very culturally appropriate i'm finding in ireland so <laughs> i i feel like i would prefer to have you know if i was going to do a grudge match video it would be and i look forward to getting beaten by you ah! yeah, yeah. you know <laughs> You guys can't lose to us. We're terrible. <laughs> yeah, one hundred percent. You all look like a bunch of winners. Um, <laughs> oh my if you do awesome. win, just imagine if you do win. Think about the afterwards video of like you oh, really God. tried, and I believed yeah. in you, but you let me down. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, now we have to do this on the next world. That sounds good. I love the idea. Sure. I love the idea. We'll do some grudge videos. I think that'll be great. <laughs> we were trying to get into the, the the Twitter hype, and you know, I did my best. Uh, nobody gave out an award for it this year, but I think that's just because they were too jealous of me. So, right. That makes yeah. sense. One hundred percent. One hundred two percent. Yeah. You know, Emma Emma was an excellent in Twitter grudges. You know, she, oh she was playing with us this year. She is still dropping some raw, hot memes that are oh excellent. You know? Her memes are absolutely... If you want good Age of Sigmar memes, go follow her on Twitter because they are absolute fire all the time. Yeah, shout out to Emma. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh! But now I think we've we've pontificated enough, and we need to get into the meat <laughs> of this, which is that Age of Sigmar 4.0 is upon us, right? Yes. It is. It is on our doorstep, and we have taken tens of minutes to read through um, all of the <laughs> various <laughs> indexes and uh, rules packs that have been dropping this week. And uh, we wanted Marco to give us his hottest and spiciest takes, um, especially about all the destruction stuff, because that's obviously the best, the best stuff. Agreed. Destruction I mean, now is the best. That, now that we don't have Beast of Chaos, which previously was the best, we, we're, we're not going to talk about the, uh, the, the 
what did they even call that? What was the little baby index they gave us where they're actually really good? Because Beast of Chaos, that the book that they dropped or the index that they dropped is actually really good. Yeah, yeah, that is wild. <laughs> it was so salty. <laughs> All yeah, the salt. And bone splitters actually look really good as well. Um, I, I haven't even looked at it yet. I think that's going to be the theme. Yeah, like, yeah, no, but like surprisingly good considering. Uh, you know, usually when they do these sort of, you know, uh, on their way out kind of uh, treatments, it's just like, yeah, okay, these are these are twenty percent worse for for their points. You know, just just in general. I agree. Uh, I'm positively surprised by the uh, spent effort and creativity in, uh, especially Beasts of Chaos, and Bone Splitters mm -hmm. as well. I mean, Margo, even the there are... Stormcast ones were interesting too, right? Like, oh, sure. they, it's like they finally got the rules right for some of them, and then they're like, yeah, hey, you know, we're, uh, goodbye. <laughs> uh, good Maybe for them. They got them right at some point. Yeah. Maybe they'll just re release those models with new sculpts soon, and then they, they can come back. Yeah, That'd whatever's nice. whatever's going on with those is going to go on. I, I yeah. do love the new indexes so far i don't think there's been one yet that i've looked at that has been like eh you know the each of what? them seem to have a very good like mix of units even like the fire slayers surprisingly which had a very good mix of units mm -hmm. uh, as far as like their use cases and like um the variety of lists that you could build which by the way building lists is just still alien um, even it's though I know how to do it, it's just like, okay, cool. Uh, down to two heroes or three heroes max for most of my lists. It's very interesting. Yeah. And hey Marco, have you done a lot of list building? Just Yes. Okay. Ungodly I, I, amount of list building <laughs> by, by pen and paper, like a true destruction player. There nice. you go. Pen so, and paper. Just... It's going to be interesting how it shakes out, but I definitely feel highly disincentivized to take little heroes really you know like uh Ooh. so even with destruction even with for example iron jaws exactly and, and that's the thing that's that's throwing me because right obviously last edition iron jaws you had you know maybe one maw crusher and you you spent all of your leaders right you had two war chantas and a wizard and you know, maybe a uh, maybe a mega boss, or or you've allied something in. Like you were spending all of those slots. That was um, for sure. And and now it's like, do I? Is it worth the drops to take these guys? I don't know. And maybe it is, right? Because I don't know how that's gonna that's gonna play out. But it's like, do I still want to take? You know, each one of my war chantas is its own drop. Well, as I understood, some of them can go into the mm -hmm. some other regiment, right? Instead of a unit. Sure. Yeah. 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 But it, so at least for Iron Jaws, it's just the Ard Boy boss who's like the least exciting of all the of all the foot. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Agree. <Agreed. laughs> he needs but, a blow up, uh, definitely. Yeah. No. And, and you know, I, it's nice to have a reason to take him. Um, but like like the in Cruel Boys, the Belchabana guy, he's his own drop. He can't go in another one in someone else's regiment. Yeah, some of those were interesting. And then some of the moves over. Like I know you guys are on destruction right now, but it was really interesting to see the um oh, what's it called? Of course now I'm gonna just one hundred percent blank on it. The um the necromancer cart, not the corpse, corpse cart, cut. but the other one, the oh. uh the flying one uh that I used to take in lists all the time. Uh, Black coach. No, in in the uh, soul blights. Uh, throne, the charnel throne, or the. It's the necromancer one. Uh, okay, pull it up. The right necromancer there. variant of the charnel throne. I I I accidentally just closed it, but they turned it into a hero when it was just a supporting piece before. So they actually kind of brought it back to what it used to be, but uh, mortis engine. That's what it is. So. Okay. The Mortis engine is now a hero, meaning it changes the way you have to build your lists um, quite a bit because you can only put certain things in with a Mortis engine as a hero. 
So like there's little idiosyncrasies like that that are very interesting because um, you can only get like dead walker stuff in with the mortis engine meaning um and not even all the dead walker stuff it's uh yeah it's it's very interesting the how they've been able to limit the amount of i guess cp that you can have to do all the crazier things in the game that we uh, mm -hmm. that we now have access to um by having that unit choice, right? If I really wanted yeah. to build the list, I really wanted to build, I just have a hero hanging out there um, and, uh, you know, maybe trying to finagle a way into putting something in as an auxiliary, which is from what it looks like currently not the best idea. Um, sure. So it's, it's, it's actually kind of brilliant. The more I've been building lists and the more um, I've been looking at it, how they've been able to kind of restrict the possibility of like overbearing armies coming in now that we don't <laughs> now that we're not restricted to battle line um it's very cool yeah it's just been a very interesting jump because i felt like last the last two ghbs especially i felt very incentivized to take all the little heroes mm-hmm you know, I, obviously with the Enderian Locus and the Galatian Champions before them, um, right, they were very explicit reasons, like, you need to have infantry heroes, otherwise you can't do the thing. And now I'm like, why would I want these infantry heroes? Because I could just have a Maw Crusher lead, lead this, uh, you know, battalion, or I could have Gobsprack lead this battalion. You know, yeah. like, all, of the, all the units I want in Cruel Boys are also heroes. You but, could also have Kragnos leading a battle. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. The big man himself. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of yes. that too is army dependent, right? Um, I could, like if you wanted to do a walking death list for soul black grave lords, you'd, you know, you'd definitely want smaller characters like the Sekar. The snake lady is very good for just a walking death list um, mm -hmm. and necromancers and stuff. And you could build it out that way as well. Uh, but I think that much, very much is army dependent right now. Because um, even like the small um, killer bosses uh, with a bunch of gut rippers look good to me. Um, yeah. So I, I think I think there's there's variation for what you want to do with it. But like, yeah, Iron Jaws, totally. Maw Crusher, throw in a couple of pigs, good to go. Rinse and repeat, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, or Brutes. Yeah, brutes, brutes look are really good. Very good. They look. Scary. I created a list. I created a list of if you guys don't mind me interrupting, of oh, the no, amount of mean. buffs. Marco, this amount is a buffs. podcast that where we talk about stuff. It's of course you're allowed to interrupt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so a uh, list of buffs that a unit of brutes, ten of them, can get, and I was like, five out of these seven things you can get semi-reliably like you can get exploding sixes you can get heroic action plus one attack you can get plus one uh from like a damage from prayer mm -hmm. and you can get plus one attack from the from the charge sub faction mm -hmm. and they are dealing amazing amount of damage yeah and this was a unit that i was still championing last edition when they were just okay so um i, I think they they seem amazing um and, and having said that though what's kind of interesting i don't know if you guys have seen it felt this overall about like some units seem great some units seem less great but I like but not like awful like i don't like them or anything but like i haven't seen anything that, I, that i'm like oh my god that's the most broken thing in the world like the power level has been pretty good across. Have you all seen Varangard? I, I saw that they were not as good as they used to be. <laughs> oh, what about those crit mortals? Yeah, I mean those are good. I'm not saying that they're bad. I'm just saying I think they're not as good as they were. I think um, I think it's interesting because you know I I haven't had a game of fourth yet. Um, I don't sure. know if you guys have, uh, but what it's looking like and this is what has me the most excited is that 
units have roles again. And, um, mm -hmm. and that's something we haven't seen in AOS for a while, right? It's just basically like, okay, this, like, they can be, they can be used in lit in lists with a role, like here's my screen, here's my teleport to the back line to get this one battle tactic, etc. Mm -hmm. But they don't have like defined ways of causing damage to certain units or resisting damage from certain units. They didn't have that in the previous editions. Now they actually have like an anti-infantry, meaning you want to use them specifically only against infantry, not to crush through everything with the most uh, up modified, sure. you know attacks and i think that interplay in the game is probably my favorite change that we see like one of the things that makes brutes so terrifying to me is like i'm looking at a lot of infantry style uh lists at the moment where there's a lot of them there um and the ability to turn off their uh, their control and get an extra rend on them just innately without any buffs makes them look terrifying right um, yeah. I, I really like that interplay that we can have because thinking of it competitively, um, you know, if you show up to a tournament with a uh, one style of list, you're going to run into your rock really, really quickly. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so I, 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 I very much like that style of, um, of, I guess of the game right now. So, yeah. Yes. It will be interesting to see. Uh, I agree with you one hundred percent. But it will be interesting to see in the following next month, next month, several months. Uh, will people align with what you have said, or are the ha old habits uh, continue with, especially now uh, of, of spamming one unit, uh, continue? Because especially now you don't even need to have like a, a general or sub faction to unlock. It. You have no longer. You don't have any battle line requirements. Oh yeah. And so that's why I think that the Belakor and, and the 100 Varangard are probably going to make uh, a staple. They are probably going to become a staple list in uh, in Slaves to Darkness, oh, especially 100%. with improved Belakor. Yeah, like, and I I don't see that that kind of play going away. I just see hard counters to them coming up much quicker. Right, because it's built into some lists. So, like, if you go up against a ton of um, uh, not wardens, what are the pikes from uh, Lumina? Anything Sentinels? that's like, no, yeah, uh, no, they are word. wardens. They're yeah, so so anything anti charge plus one rent immediately is going to have a little bit more effect against that stuff. Anything with um, anti cavalry, anti cavalry too, right? So there's like, like pigs. Yeah, the or anti-monster. Yeah. And now you have the GHB where you can plant an anti-cav or anti-monster, you know, thing on your list, uh, which means that now you can tailor to fight against those lists that are specifically built to do that one thing. Um, so I, I don't know. I'm, I'm very interested to see how it will shake out as well. I, I, I love it, to be 100% honest. Same here. I have exactly zero played games so far, but I consider mm -hmm. myself an expert. And <laughs> and uh, <laughs> from the games I have read about, you know, and watched, I really love the fact that you actually have a lot of active time during your opponent's turn, more than ever. That was definitely a trend we saw in third ed that I think... Um, I think it made it made third ed what like really really interesting, and um, I'm so happy that they that the designers thought it was interesting too, and they cleared up a lot of the timing interactions, right? Of like, oh, I have now that I've moved, I have to wait to, for you to decide. Do you want to redeploy? I need to ask you every single time, you know. Um, it's 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 almost like uh, we were playing. Um, I don't know if you play Magic the Gathering, but they have that interrupt problem. So if you play Magic the Gathering online, they're constantly setting a, a 10 second timer for you to respond. Mm -hmm. And uh, versus something like Hearthstone where uh, things just happen, you know, and they, the Hearthstone has very little interactability in your opponent's turn um, or, or not as much. Um, so you don't get as many timers, but, um, but it seems like they've largely solved the timer problem by just having very specific times where, where you react. Um, 
which is awesome. Agreed. You know, like you do all your movement and then I will react and then you do all of your thing and then I will react. Um, but yeah, it's, it's going to be very interesting because one thing I definitely have not wrapped my head around mm -hmm. going, going forward as we're going to evolve into the meta is the battle tactics and the missions. And I think that's going to be huge for how we, how we build this and how we go into this um, edition, right? Like, yeah, certain units look strong, but like, I think we both know it's about scoring points. It's not about killing stuff, you know? So it's like, cool. <laughs> like, so, so I look at iron jaws and I'm like, okay, these guys look, they look like iron jaws. That's wonderful. Um, you know, we've had some notes about, how hard it is to take a war chanta if I wanted one. Um, but, uh, you know, how do they do battle tactics? Are they good at battle tactics? I don't know. <laughs> but do we care in our hearts? Do we care? Yeah. <laughs> you know? well, I'm just imagining. Right? I'm just yeah. imagining looking at Kragnos with exploding sixes, you know? Mm -hmm. It's just, it, and, and him launching Brutes 3D6. Plus one, plus two potentially even. No, mm -hmm. it just I, I it's gonna ha it's kind of easy to forget about the battle tactic <laughs> when you get seventeen inch charge with brutes. <laughs> sure. No, that's oh, true. I mean, question. but like, yeah. Uh, do you like more about Kragnos getting exploding sixes in Iron Jaws, or him being immune to shooting outside of twelve? And getting a mystic shield in cruel birds. Ooh. That is tough. I don't own a Kragnos, so I feel like my my I will I borrow you one. Yeah. <laughs> I'll have to get one. Uh he's definitely on the list. It I I do tend to save those like unless there's like a very specific reason to get one of those like centerpiece models because they're like list defining. Um, I try to save them. So like Archeon, I didn't get Archeon until I was like nearly done with the Slaves of Darkness army as like a treat for myself, you know? Nice. Um, and so Kragnos is that. So I'm, I'm working on the Cruel Boys now. And, and when, when they're looking good, we'll get a Kragnos. That'll be fun. Nice Wait. little treat for myself. I, I need to check. Are Dirty Tricks work, working on Kragnos? That's a good question. I Hang on, I have it open. So hold... Please, me. Um, the dirty tricks seem actually very cool. Um, and if I'm reading it right, so do 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 do. do. Um, the, yes, the, some of them they, do. <laughs> yeah, they work on they work on Kragnos. Uh, there's um, the Lazy lethal racket. surprise, which is the 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 charge mortals, the anti charge, right? And then the noisy racket, which is the strike last. Oh. Um, Can you imagine but... somebody charging Kragnos? And then you just go. <laughs> nice charge you have there. Yeah. It would be a shame. <laughs> it's a shame if somebody <laughs> did something to it. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, the dirty tricks are going to be super interesting because, like, uh, as far as I can tell, right, you can use one per phase, right? There's only one every phase. It doesn't matter. Um, but uh, it's the, 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 the roll resets every battle round, right? Mm -hmm. So you're very judicious about the first one, and you're pretty judicious about the second one, which one you're going to do. But as soon as you hit four up, you just start using every single one of them. Exactly. <laughs> You know, <laughs> some like, of them you know, maybe like, even twice per turn. Yeah, no, exactly, right? Like if they're all once per turn per army, but like, yeah, I will. Like as soon as I hit, if if I use the the two up and the three up in my turn and I go first, um, I'm gonna use, make sure to use all four of them in my in my opponent's turn or whatever. Agreed. You know? Agreed. Um, cause, cause whatever, uh, it's just a, like, the, uh, there's no more penalty. I just get to try it. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, um, five up. You know, just yeah, throw right? five. Like, a just third of them will work. So, you know, one and a bit should go off. Yeah. <laughs> so Matt, how are you surviving this, all of this destruction talk? 
Oh, Matt. <laughs> I can hop in for just a moment. Um, yeah. Sorry, we're, I'm doing the doing the job Doug, ju juggling today, but um, I I haven't actually had a chance to go through all of the um, destruction stuff just yet. Um, it it's uh. <laughs> It's it's barely past uh, nine thirty um, my time, yeah, uh, so yeah. I generally have been digesting them through the day outside of like specific armies that I wanted to look at. Um, you know, the first one that I'm gonna go through is gonna be Cruel Boys. Um, they're the army that I felt had the most draw from destruction for me, and then the second is going to be I need to go through and kind of take a look at the. Um, the spider side of bloom spike gets i have a uh, spider army that i've been playing on and off for about uh two and a half years now i think something like that you and, are a brave uh, man hey they're a lot of I fun respect you. they uh i i don't tend to do anything that is actually good <laughs> i prefer <laughs> to play with an arm and a leg tied behind my back apparently um but they're uh they from what I have been hearing, the spiders are actually fun again. They were fun in the last book um, with some points here and there being a little strange. But, um, you know, I, I'm going to be looking at those to see how they go. I know trogs are going to be good. I know squigs are going to be good for what they do. But spiders are usually the ones that are kind of like they're either fail hard or win hard. And um, I'm hoping they can just hit middle ground. Do you think, so this is a hard question, do you think that spider part of the gits is going to get um, squatted? I really hope not, um, because that'll be like the sixth army now. <laughs> of mine. I, I feel like if, if they were going to do it, they'd have done it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. they squatted enough things. If you were going to get rid of spiders, if you had plans to get rid of spiders, you would have done it already. Yeah, one hundred percent. The fact that they're still here means that I think they're they're going to get a refresh. I think you know we did lose our war boss and spider, but that's them just cleaning up fine cast, right? Sure. The spider kits are amazing, and I don't see them going away. Um, I'm sure that GW sells just a ton for conversions, mm. um, so I don't see them going away in the rules. Um, I I want them to expand on it. Um, give us new spider cav models you know i have 40 of those already but like give me some new ones with some variations so i can build something that's a little less reliant on uh, poison and maybe um give me our armored spiders that'd be cool Ooh, that would be, be awesome i'd love to see yeah. especially the sculpting has gotten so much better since those um those kits came out too that I, I have to imagine anything that comes out for spiders now would be jaw dropping. Oh yeah. But just imagine the, the cost to your soul of putting it together. <laughs> <laughs> each, uh, each spider leg is actually 12 pieces. <laughs> oh, but it cannot be harder than, uh, front spine incarnate. Oh, oh yeah, I think the benchmark is bliss barb. Bliss barbs are are the are the are the unit that I've put together. Uh, what is it, thirty three of? And oh, I, I still don't... have I still have more to put together, and I just can't bring myself to do it. I actually don't believe that you've put together thirty three. I think you did eleven, and then you you imagined you had like a fever dream of doing the other twenty two. <laughs> yeah, and then they magically it appeared in the case. That was me doing yeah. it sleepwalking. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's so good. Yeah, no, I'm just noticing Marco from our discussion earlier that Kragnos does get the the keyword for whatever army he's in, which is super fun. Exactly. So um, he can get a heal in Iron Jaws. He can get a teleport, exploding sixes, bonus yeah. damage. You know, in it's, Cruel it's Boys, nice he can get he, Mystic Shield. Yeah, it's very nice that he is, uh, you know, a, a full citizen. You know, in each of these armies. 
I also like that he doesn't have any companion attacks. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the companion attacks thing has been weird because uh, companion attacks can't be modified or don't get, don't get bonuses from abilities. But all that attack, probably the most common ability, does affect them. Because it is, it is outright stated. stated yeah, yeah, no, exactly. I'm just, you know, I, I found it silly. I, I you know, I, it's just a, uh, um, like, like it's probably, like, to, you know, keep things from uh, becoming mul multiplicative. Um, I like the fact that Chimera from Beast mm -hmm. of Chaos has all of the, their attack, um, all of its attacks companion. And then she has a War Scroll ability that doesn't work on her attacks. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> it simply does not work because rules is written. Yeah, yeah, she cannot can't get it. any benefit. Yeah, That's pretty fantastic. I, I am assuming, I definitely, there was a pre-FAQ that came out before we even got the faction packs with the, if you... I am assuming that, like me, uh, most people stopped scrolling on the points document as, as soon as mm -hmm. they got to their army. But actually, if you do scroll down all the way, there is an FAQ <laughs> that already came out uh, for some stuff that they found. Um, I don't know if it's in there. And I imagine if it was in there, we would have noticed already. But uh, <laughs> I do Companion. think those things, they'll, they'll figure that Com stuff out. Companion got FAQ'd. So it doesn't work on any friendly ability, not just from units. Interesting. So it's extra not okay. Extra not okay, I agree. But Kragnos does not have it, so, you know. No, he's good. He's good to go. I feel the resurgence of Kragnos models. Yeah. That's always good. He, he did have a, a nice, like, last... Um, Last hurrah in the ogres uh, build from at Worlds. Oh yeah, that, that, that was we had one. We had a, uh, Arno played ogres, and in American uh, Sons of Behemoth at least as well. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean that was a very hipster choice though on their part. So I think <laughs> the entire team got the hipster choice. Yeah. I respect that. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> it was so funny because uh, when I was looking at the list, you had like twenty six teams. You had 26, the only army that was times 26 was Sons of Behemoth. Mm -hmm. 25 of them, King Broad Stomp, completely the same list, like yep. com completely the same list. And then there's the American list. <laughs> so shout out to American team for going hipster. Yeah, exactly. I, and it sounded like um, we interviewed Matt Beasley uh, last week, and it sounded like that was because um, they kind of landed on it late you know they they were playing the whoever it was that played that army was playing something and it got nerfed and they was playing something different and it got nerfed and it's like okay i need to come up with something fast you know and uh they threw it together but i think it worked out so that's which is awesome it was awesome anti gargant list yeah no exactly and and um that ended up being the real uh interesting meta pick at worlds was the ant like what do you have that kills gargants you know um we had our kids player was was our gargant smasher you had only yeah. one gargant smasher right i mean we, we have a lot of people who could who could go into it if they needed to but he was like i will get 20 points every single time and i think i think he averaged like 15 he had one zero which was like a huge upset but like all of the other times he got 19s and 20s. So I think he averages, his average was still pretty good. Nice. But um, yeah, it's going to be good. What other, what other army, we've talked about destruction so much. What other armies are you excited at looking at going into this new edition? Um, Flesh Eater Courts. Oh. I also am a little bit excited about Soul Blight. Soul Blight. Grave Lord, okay. God damn it, S S B G L <laughs> L. Um, I think that Black. I, I got surprised how Black Knights got got boosted. Like I yeah. have I don't know if you yeah. guys checked the War Scroll. 
I have not. I, I honestly, I didn't get a lot of time yesterday. I will load it up right now. They're um, so good. They're so good. Yeah, they're amazing. Yeah. I'm, I'm listening in the background. Top. They've always been good, but um, they. I've been running a Black Knight Neferata uh, Mortis engine list forever, and they've only gotten better with each release. I'm so happy with what they did with Black Knights. Yeah, tell us about like, your excitement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, did, I, I, I can pull it up in just a sec. I gotta finish this meeting. I'm so bad, guys. <laughs> <laughs> the best podcast <laughs> ever. <laughs> I just um, wanted to jump in. I can, I can, uh, I can talk a little bit about Matt's list. So, um, it's, it's what it sounds like. It's Neferata and, uh, and I think another dra uh, zombie dragon and a bunch of black knights like. 30 or 40 black knights like some unreasonable number of black knights um <laughs> and completely viable you mean yeah uh well what's what's super interesting about them is like they they don't well in the in the previous edition at least they didn't do a ton of damage but they were so good at like gumming up the works you know because they could charge in they do some mortals that's great and if that doesn't doesn't work um they're probably not doing a ton more damage but they are they can, you know, there's such a long unit that they can tag a bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. And now, um, you know, now you can't, you can't move. You can't, to, you, you can't get out of there or they could wrap. I had, um, I had um, Swedish player at Six Nation, Niels. I think he played on, on the Team UN. Um, he managed to snake through two units of Brutes such that neither of them could actually retreat because they're so slow. Oh, <laughs> yeah, which was not very nice. Uh, but, um, but yeah, okay, so Black Knights. One, I see they seem to have gotten another wound because apparently they needed that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. I do think I do think we're seeing, you know, like we saw it in, in 40K in 8th edition where things started getting two wounds. And now things are getting three wounds. So I think that they are getting more. Um, and I think that that level of granularity is, is good, you know, as you things know, get more, people, wounds, things more damage. Things have been hitting the gym, I mean. Makes yeah, sense. No, that, yeah. These black knights, they don't, they're not slouches. Um, nice. Yeah. Okay. So they get, so they don't do the impact hits, but they, um, like their damage output looks way better and they do get a bunch of charge bonuses. So it's, it's a crit mortal plus a plus one damage. So, so that's a two mortal crit on the charge, mm -hmm. which is pretty nice. Oh, that's cool. They also yeah, have a so, sub faction. Ah, oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. Go, oh, no, you're good. So with the previous iterations of black Knights, you had two different previous iterations with uh Soul light. Right, so the first one you could just run in, tag a bunch of units, and primarily this is when thunder lizards were really big, right? So your damage is not being halved. You can run in, throw like four units in. Doesn't matter mm -hmm. the size of the unit; it's going to be D three mortal wounds, right? So throw four in. That's four D three mortal wounds on a lizard. They're now down to the point where they're not going to be doing as much damage back to you, right? Um, and then you'd have the zombie dragons come in and just wipe with high rent. Um, and then Neff would, you know, do whatever she wanted, uh, generally just soak up fire because people were terrified of Neffy for some reason when it was the Black Knights doing all the work. The next edition, they got those four and up, you know, for the four, five and up or four and up, depending on whether you had a white lord for uh, putting mortals out on the charge. And then now that they have like good damage and um, the possibility of critting mortals after having charged for two mortals each, their output goes higher. It's going to be a change of how they play, but essentially now they can actually stand on their own in combat. And, um, and there's still dead walkers. One of the biggest worries that I had was they were not going to be summonable still, right? Or in this mm -hmm. case, like bring back. Um, so they're, they're solid. I think every cavalry unit has gotten one more wound 
just because you know they're on a horse the horse should count as at least one wound right um and and the zombie dragons I mean, still having the ability to kind of like teleport in wherever they want makes it so it's a very you get to play the opponent's game um and just throw wrenches in wherever you want um and that's that's where i really like the the common essentially a new core and, yeah yeah you get to you get to be mean <laughs> <laughs> so matt what do you think will be the first meta pick for a soul bite like a list that is going to be meta oh man i don't know i think it's probably going to be vampire lord on zombie dragon and something you know um people are just going to gravitate towards the the zombie dragon vampire lord no matter what just because of its it's just it's terrifying terrible. Right. It's, yeah, absolutely. Uh, um, outside of that, there's going to be a lot of zombie players that are like, you know what? I can do an insane amount of zombies now and just gum up the field, right? For control of objectives. Because mm -hmm. um, once, like, a, what is it? 40 zombies are on an objective and 40 zombies are behind them. If you split an objective between two units of 40 zombies, they can cover the entire objective. That's gone for the game, right? Uh, so that kind of I think it's going to be the same style for a lot of people I think Black Knights will have a resurgence uh, but they are they're a they're not a harder unit to play they're less forgiving if you are not playing at full competency um, mm. especially now that they're not throwing mortals on the charge uh, would you so, be playing them with the new Manfred with the new what Man Manfred von Karstein. Uh, no, I generally shy away from Manfred. I think Nephi is the best. Nephi's my favorite. And I have an unreasonable um, love for Nephi's ability to just make somebody waste attacks on an unrendable um, unit. Uh, so, like, her her war scroll has changed a little bit to the point where like infantry is not going to be infantry i think is the only one that's able to take it um that unrendable spell but even no, then that just non-monster huh? non-monster non yeah okay so yes that so then what that Ten means, black knights <laughs> yeah that, that means black knights are now even better right and you can double them up um and not feel bad about it um, I think my list is pretty much going to stay the same, to be honest. Um, I would love to be able to put a Mortis Engine in, but I need to play the game a little bit to see whether or not taking an Auxiliary is actually worth it or not. Um, because White Lords make Black Knights even more insane. Um, so there's just there's just a lot. I think the, the, the game is still... You know, I, I feel like my, my theory is going to be immeasurably changed by my very first game <laughs> of yeah, fourth edition. Enough, enough. Um, I was thinking, like, I feel like we're going to see um, Monster Mash. We're going to see lots of doubled up units, right? Because people are going to be trying to go for low drops, and then they're just like, All right, I might as well reinforce everything. Um, I feel like that's going to be a big um, initial meta surge. I certainly... That was like my instinct when I was building all of my lists. So I have to assume probably other people arrived at that point as well. Um, but yeah, and it'll all come down to how, like, what's, what's, what I keep coming back to is like, how important is it to be low drop? Because in last edition, it was very, like, depending on your list, obviously, it was very important to be low drop because of the nature of getting double turned and all that kind of thing. But now getting double turned is like a whole different ballpark. So if if you don't have the risk of getting double turned, is going first, is going second, is controlling that pace nearly as important? And do you just have however many drops you want to have and don't worry about it? You know, are, are there as many armies that like I must be one drop? Well, there probably will be armies that will require one drop. Because mm -hmm. they want to play first to drop all of their buffs. 
Sure. Like, you know, Lumineth, yeah. Seraphon, all those family-friendly armies, you know, just... Mm-hmm. They 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 rush to play first to possibly you know pre- get ready that even if you get a double turn like in third edition even if you get a double turn you cannot go through them. And sure. Now that you probably won't take a double turn, you know, then they have a very high incentive to play first. Yeah, no, that's true. Um... But I don't feel like we'll see as many of the like, like, um, you know, Ko notably always wanted to play second so that they would never get double turned. But if if the risk of double turn and and so as a result, your list options, you know, shrank because you were trying mm-hmm. to fit into one or two battle regiments. Um, and so if if that and and I do think actually their their list building still looks pretty tight if. You know, because you can have a hero and a boat, um, and and an auxiliary hero in most regiments. Um, mm-hmm. But so so they may end up still being one. To, they'll probably be a two drop. I, I don't. I most armies, it's hard to be a one drop anymore. Just because that, that's that's four units, you can't do that, or five, that's five units. You know, like what, what are you bringing that's five units? In the, you know what I mean. <laughs> Theradons. <laughs> Theradons. Yeah, exactly. Theradons. <laughs> Varangard. Black yeah. Ones. All right. yeah, exactly. Like I think there'll be a few, you know, but it yeah, it'll, and it'll be some monstrously elite army. Um yeah. but uh but yeah, Garrett, because you used to be able to get what was it, nine, ten ish units out of a battle regiment, and mm-hmm. now you can get five units into a one drop unless you have some you know allegiance ability that i don't know about no you're correct five so but and again it may not matter right if if people aren't double turning right uh because if again if we're going for score differential or we're going for um you know if, if you're looking for tiebreaker points in some sort of larger gt you want to win by as many points as possible. So giving up four points to do a double turn that you may not need, I don't know, could uh, could be not the right play. I don't know. It's good. That that's the part that I keep coming back to when I'm reading these. I'm like, okay, I like these. I like these war scrolls, but how is this going to score points? <laughs> you know. Uh. You're doing the smart checkup. You're not doing the disruption Probably. checkup. Yeah. I'm just bad at hot takes, I think, is, is, what, is what's happening. I have a hot take. Okay. Shooting is still OP. Oh, yeah. For sure. Um, yep. That's fair. Oh, elaborate I mean, on that one. Elaborate on that one for us. That, that I need to hear. <laughs> so... Uh, shooting armies now have a free shooting, okay, in mm-hmm. my turn, okay. And before sure. you tell me it costs one CP, um, it allows you for one CP to deal a significant amount of damage, sometimes even critical amount of damage, to very important models in your own turn. Um, so that's one thing. Second of all, we have already seen at least two armies that can teleport a shooting unit to a place where they cannot be charged in your movement phase and where they can shoot at something that you want to hide from shooting, like a dirty tricks from crow boys. Just pick mm-hmm. a unit of six uh, bold boys, use the teleporting, uh, teleporting dirty trick. If you yep. get it, you just drop them somewhere like on 12.1 from very important hero or a very important unit, and then just go with covering fire. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Can you do the dirty trick in, is it any movement phase? Yes. Nice. Yes. Not to mention uh, the <laughs> Thunderers, Thunderers being yep. immune to charge, because you come to the three inches of them. They are, for example, they are traveling with the boat. 
you come to the three inches and they go, the opponent says, okay, at the end of your movement, I will redeploy my boat. He will pick up the Thunderers, move the boat for D6, and then drop the Thunderers six inch behind, wherever the boats finish the move. Oh. And now you can't even charge them. I, I didn't think about that. That's very cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's going to be a whole level of new KO bullshittery. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Does that does the the boat does it for all moves? I thought it was just move ability. All moves, all moves. All moves. So if it's mm -hmm. a if it's an ability that's tagged as a move. Yes. Okay. Um, um, also, cool. like the Games Workshop told us, ranges will be reduced, and then you open a KO book, and then you have um, all thunders have plus three inch, true, true, and then. A heroic trait plus two inch to shoot. Yeah. So essentially plus five. You know, just not to hope about, not to get any dreams I, up I, about I, this shooting. I did notice that the cruel boy shooting did get shorter range. So, so. But you can teleport them in the. Yeah, yeah no, I know. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> you can teleport them in the opponent's moving phase. You don't yeah, need well, them. And uh, and their whole move and shoot thing is significantly less restrictive, right? Exactly. Right now, if you don't move, you get a plus one to hit, which is nice. Um, but it was like before, it was like if you move, your your range gets halved and your shot gets mm -hmm. like immeasurably worse. Mm -hmm. So, 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 Matt, are you satisfied with my elaboration? <laughs> I love it. Uh, we were just talking about the KO uh, the other night, actually. So. Uh, Little Fish of Fury KO. Yep, sounds nice. like that's back. Oh yeah, that's the classic. <laughs> the Tau, the Tau Fish of Fury. Um, that was. I don't know, Marco. Do you are you familiar with the Tau play? Uh, was, no. It's where you you um, you bring your Devil Fish, which is their transports, up, mm -hmm. and you and you sort of make a, a a wall with them, and then you get all of your stupid little Tau guys out right behind them, and then they shoot underneath the boat. <laughs> um and that was a that, that was definitely a trick you'd pull in first edition ko where you know once you got out of the boat that was pretty much it you were never getting back in the boat so it was one of those things where you plop the boat you'd get out right behind so that you could have as much as much you know time between you and your uh your ultimately ultimate demise as possible yeah but the, yeah the old fish of fury <laughs> <laughs> Good old. Now that's one hot day. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, it looks like Jack uh, is not going to make it. The winds of change did not change for him. So um, <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. These things happen. It is. It is very difficult to schedule these uh, podcasts. That is. Uh, I just want everybody to know at home. Who can't? Who doesn't have to go through this? And it is very tricky. And we do a lot of work. <laughs> and I, I'm grateful for your work. <laughs> um, but no, this has been uh, this has been really fun uh, chatting with you, Marco. I, I think we've come to a good we come to a good a good place. How do you feel? Nice. I mean, I really enjoyed this. I really enjoyed this, and I hope that this will perform well, and that therefore you will have a reason to call me again. Not just oh, because you like me. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, thanks so much for coming on, Marco. Thank you, Absolutely. Matt, for being uh, such a lovely host. No. <laughs> You're coming on more often, Marco. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. 100%. Yes. I'm, I'm doing uh, it, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, everybody, thanks for uh, listening all the way to the end. Uh, right, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Is that a thing that we do? I don't know what platform that's related to. Oh, hit click the like button at the bottom of the screen, wherever you like, are. Like, subscribe, Patreon, all the fun things, all the stuff yeah. with the things. It's merch the things with stuff. Oh, merch. These yeah, people too. deserve deserve our support. Let's do it. We even got the guy on the podcast saying. I'm here for it. I'm here for it. <laughs>